they're they're missing the entire next generation of of investors, and they're just making fun of them. That's all they say. All oh, the Robin Hood millennials, and they just joke about it, and just move on. But I mean, their entire audience is retiring soon, and they're going to be withdrawing all of their stocks and putting them into fixed assets. And who's going to watch them? Welcome back to the Beetle Moment Marketing Podcast. My name is Emily Binder. I am here with two very special guests. We have Wall Street Booyah and John Andrews. So Wall Street Booyah has over 6,000 Twitch followers and hosts a show all about investing and the stock market and everything going on in the financial world on Twitch, which is really something special and unique. John was on last week with us. John Andrews is the CEO of Photofy and also a shopper marketing and retail expert. John was the one who brought Booyah to my attention. We've all connected. We just wanted to get back on here and have this uh, conversation about what you're up to on Twitch. So tell us about your Twitch channel. Sure. Thank you, Emily. Thank you guys for having me on. Um, John, how are you? Good. To, uh, good, good. Good to talk to you. Good to um, talk to you. Yeah, the uh, really the it all started. Um, I was a, the a, a community member and a moderator of uh, of uh, the subreddit Wall Street Bets, which I'm sure most people are in are familiar with now, especially what's going on in, with the market today. Uh, and we had the idea to do a, ch a a charity stream, so I took the the lead on that. Just started up the Twitch channel. Uh, we ran a charity stream. We raised, I think, over thirty-six thousand dollars, and it. I had this idea in January, and it just, it just so happened we ran it in March, and it, it, it every, you know, everything just kind of came together, with you know the market crashing and COVID and everyone's home, and so, so I ran, I ran the charity stream. It was very successful. It was a lot of fun, and then that was on a Thursday, and then people were like, "Hey, you gonna be back on tomorrow?" And you know, we're we're all sitting at home doing nothing. I'm like, sure. I don't know what you guys want to do, but. Yeah, why, why not? I'll be back on tomorrow, and you know, here we are, three months uh, later, and you know, we're just we're just cranking right along. So yeah, uh, you know, I found your channel just super entertaining, and it's the kind of thing you could have on in the background. I know, John, you do that like throughout every workday, right? I do, I do. I, I have um, Booyah's channel running in the uh, running the background, and I'll I'll check in from time to time and uh, see what the uh, what he and the community are, are talking about, or he'll, you know, he'll integrate uh, other content. You know, if the uh, uh, Chairman Powell speaking, or the President, or CNBC or CNBC stories going on, you know, he'll integrate that into the conversation, and so it saves me a lot of time, like wondering what's going on. I can just, you know, I can just kind of kind of catch it there, and and I think, you know, as I mentioned to you, and, and how this conversation kind of came about is. I, when I watch this, I'm like, oh wait, this is something new, right? And and uh, I, we, you know, our previous and uh, the conversation before the 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 chat got started today, we were talking about how many financial channels are on Twitch. And I, yeah, I said, I think you said there are what three? Yeah, I, I mean, there are three, three like consistent, uh, consistently like broadcast watched. and regular. Right, right. Yeah. I, you know, I don't, I don't mean to put down anyone that 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 has a financial channel. I'm sure there are dozens, but there there are three uh, main ones. Yeah, yeah. No, I and, and I I didn't mean that. I, I a just don't know, and b Twitch is a gamer streaming network. So right, right. And I and and out of the out like yeah, out of the you know two two and a half million uh, streamers that are registered for Twitch, you know, there's if if there's fifty people focused on you know finance or, or trading then you know that it's it's an absolutely insignificant uh population relative to their platform well that was what was so interesting to me about it because i really haven't used twitch before i know what it is basically but it's not somewhere where i would normally think to go and get financial information and that's cool like this is about inventing essentially a new category category killing like if you go start a podcast about financial advice, you're competing. There, there are 800,000 podcasts out there and actually a lot of them have to do with finance. Same thing with um, starting a blog, like good luck. But if you go to a channel where you're the one of the few, if not the only doing what you're doing from a marketing standpoint, that, that's smart. And that's something 
where you're hitting this, this cool balance. Like I, I was watching you the other day and I took down a couple of the things you said, just to give our audience oh, kind of no. an idea of like the weird <laughs> stuff that comes out of your mouth. So you said, Elon is a 21st century Howard Hughes. It's a matter of time till he locks himself in a room full of pee bottles. And then you said, Tesla is a scam in many ways, but Elon is far from dumb. And you're just like off the cuff rattling out, you know, these observations as you're watching stock charts and CNBC and it's this live commentary. Like people love that. That's entertainment. Yeah. And, and those quotes specifically is it, honestly, it's, it's a big part of the, of the draw and the hook. I, that, that, that quote was fleshed out between myself and the chat. And that's, that's really the whole thing is it's, it's, like I'm, I bill myself, and it's true as as the absolute worst financial show you're ever going to see. I I don't have any training in finance or business. I don't have any uh, degrees. I am as as you know the the, the buzzword now is the Robin Hood trader. I mean that's that's yeah. exactly who I, that's exactly who I am. Um, I don't know really anything formally, but uh, it's it's the interaction and it's the community where, where stuff like that comes out. And when we're, we're having a conversation, like it's, it's like you said, it's, it's, it's kind of like a podcast. It's also like a broadcast show. And then there's this, this live interaction when it's just me and we're looking at charts live or people want to see something and we're watching the news or, uh, or, you know, if there's a car chase in the middle of the day, we'll pull up and we'll watch that. We've had two and it just, it's just, it's amazing. Um, why wouldn't you? Absolutely. You know, and it, it's, I, I, I understand it. You know, I've learned a lot. Um, even from just my little channel, I've, I've learned a lot about what it takes to fill seven hours a day. So, you know, I, I, I understand why there's like right now you just start rambling and said, and when you said things that I said, I'm like, I don't remember half of what I said all day, but um, <laughs> well, no, it takes, a, go ahead. it's so funny because Twitter is written in ink. And I've been thinking about this concept lately. So Jack says, we will never have an edit button on Twitter. And mm. I agree with him for good reason. Um, you know, it, yeah, the they absolutely of, shouldn't. Absolutely shouldn't. That's... If people are retweeting and liking and you can go back and edit what you said, that's problematic. And B, maybe it would be great if all of us could stop, you know, being able to edit ourselves so much every time and like live in the moment of real time. And that's vulnerable. That's the actual mm -hmm. authenticity, which literally like filling seven hours. Is that how long your show is? Seven hours? Market hours, 9.15 to close, 9.15 to 4.15. You might say something stupid. You might want to retract that statement. Like, too bad. It's live. We're going. And that doesn't happen as much as it used to. Sure. With broadcasting. Like sure. And it's, social media. And it, yeah. And I mean, it's, it's very difficult when I'm live and I'm, you know, I'm the only talking head. You know, I have I have chat there and we're interacting, but I'm I'm the voice. You know, I'm the one that's recorded, and it, it it's difficult to to be following the news and and following finance and and I mean, it, especially today. I mean, look look everything that's going on between our president and the protests. You know, we we track all of it and we're watching all of it. And yeah, there's there's plenty of opportunity for me to say something. Um, to say something funny and something stupid and it's you know hundreds of people see it and it's it's recorded forever so that's uh and, and that's what i found honestly appealing about it uh i had uh really started trading in earnest on robin hood probably three or four months earlier uh i had had an account for i don't know a year year and a half or so but i'd never really done anything with it and um and then all of a sudden, you know, and I have that experience with, with CNBC where often I'll hear a story or hear somebody talking and I'm yelling at the TV because I'm like, that's, that's dumb. That's just, that's just not right. You know, and, and what I love is, is now here's a whole community of people who are doing the same thing, but also having a conversation about it. Well, well, why is that not right? Why, why is, why is, uh, you, you know, why, why is Tesla a scam? Right. You know, a lot of people think that and they, they short the stock. Right. And, and day after day after day, they get killed. And, and I'm like, you know, I don't know if it's a scam or not, but I wouldn't bet against a guy that's landing rockets on the middle of a, uh, a, a, a barge in the middle of the ocean. Just personal. That's just my thing. You know, I, I think right. you'd probably do anything you want. But I love the conversation that goes on. That's not just 
somebody with a degree, a business degree from Wharton telling me what I should think, right? Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, Booyah, one of the things you say in your bio, it's none of it is financial advice because neither me nor my community know what we are doing. We're a bunch <laughs> of idiots who watch The Big Short too many times and all identify as Michael Burry. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, th that's 100% it. And, uh, and that's... I mean, that's the audience, you know, we're, we're interested in, in the stock market. We're interested in trading. Uh, a lot of us, you know, have, have gambling in our systems, you know, to be perfectly honest, playing poker and, and learning odds and, and that kind of, and those kind of mathematics. I mean, I'm, I'm the, the dumbest one out of my entire community. And it's, it's reflected in the guests we have and the people in chat. I mean, everyone is, I have engineers, pharmacists, doctors. Uh, it, it, I'm, I'm, my intelligence is dwarfed by every single person in chat, you know, yelling obscenities and, and just spamming little, you know, bears and smiley faces and stuff like that. So it, it's, a, it's a very unique uh, place. And it's very hard to describe. It's very hard to describe. It is. It is. Like I didn't get it till I actually just logged on and watched for a while. Um, <laughs> the the comments section. So there's no regulation whatsoever. Um, is there? There there is. I mean there there's, uh, you know there there's my personal guidelines as to as to you know what we shouldn't say. Twitch the platform has has guidelines um, about you know what speech is censored. But we're obviously we're you know we're R rated and. Um, yeah, it's 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 not it's not censored or or screened at all. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting in that regard because it's like a free for all, but maybe there's something good about that as long as it's not like the worst of the YouTube comment section style. Um, well, what do you think, John? So like, when you're watching, what what about it kind of hooks you or keeps you coming back? And do you participate? Do you do you, add comments in the chat are you passive yeah no i i get involved probably not as much as as other other people do but i i do and if there's something a conversation going on and i've actually had the time to listen to it i have to pop on and off a lot because i'm on calls or i'm doing things with my team or whatever but when, when i'm actually in a conversation yeah I'll, I'll participate and the community participates booyah participates what i like is i as i think as booyah said I'm doing my own research, right? And and forget this. This is exactly what he said. My Robinhood account is like this much of my tradable assets. Mm -hmm. I have professional people that manage that, and I think that's a good idea mm -hmm. uh, because there are smart people out there trading and doing things that we have no. Idea. You're just not going to have any idea about. But but this is fun for me, and I enjoy it, and and I want to learn. So. I like the conversation and even if I don't agree with it, it gives me some sense of people's mindset, which I, which I think is a lot of the, the market anyway, right? A lot of the market is emotion. So what are people thinking and they're doing? I, I used to have this uh, finance professor that said, everything is priced into the market and you know, everything is known. You know, one of those people. And I'm like, that's bananas. Like it's, it's not, I mean, if everything's priced in the market, Tesla is not worth a thousand bucks a share, you know, but people believe Tesla is going to probably take over the car industry one day and it could, I don't know, whatever. So, right. It, you know, but now you got a group of people who can talk about it. And I think that's, and, and, and converse, not just have one way, you know, push, push media conversation. I th and, and I think that's what attracts me to, to this genre. And I don't think it really compares to any, one thing you know it's a bunch of things together right right and it's not push which that's everything right now because people don't want to be sold to consumer mm -hmm. trust in advertising is at an all-time low 17 percent of people trust the news that they get on social media these are abysmal numbers so we don't trust the the news the the sources that we used to only have and now there's more of a democratization where there are more voices you can decide who you want to listen to, sure. maybe for better or worse sometimes, but yeah. yeah. And, you know, I mean, it's you, just, you, it's like power to the people and Robin puts, Hood. It, it is power to, it, yeah. it, it, Robin Hood. Zero dollar trading you, fees, like all of you've it. Got, 
you've got these, you got these things. I had asked our broker at the time for years. I said, Hey, I want to trade options. And basically their response was, no, you don't because you'll lose a lot of money and you don't want to do that. And you just, you know, so they were never, wrong. I was, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they were, they but that's were, not the uh, point. But that's not the point. I wanted to learn. I wanted to understand the premise. So Jason uh, Osborne, our, our CTO, and I were having very much uh, booyah kinds of conversations at work together. We're like, hey, what, what do you think we should do? And what, what are you doing? And, and whatever. And he actually had found the channel and said, oh, my God, you got to watch this stuff because it's, it's, it's epic. It's like you and me talking, but it's, it's like a bunch of people. And I started watching and I'm like, I'm hooked. I'm like, okay, I got it. This is, and, and this was to me like looking at influencer marketing back in 2008, 2009. Mm-hmm. I'm like, this is going to be a thing. Like this yeah. is, this is a media, this is a big media play. Yeah, it is completely. And from a podcasting perspective, it was interesting to me because this is one of the things that's missing from podcasting, which is interactivity. And mm-hmm. some people might argue you, you want it to be a passive medium. Like I want to just kick back and listen. I don't necessarily need to like bookmark this and tweet it out. And the tools to do so are terrible right now anyway. Um, but that interactivity. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like this, it might this actually, to me is inter- interactive podcasting on a, on a, yeah, on a, that's big what you said. Scale. Like, yeah, that's, that's why I was so interested, frankly. And, and now, you know, it's legit. So I don't know if you, you followed any of the stuff that kind of went on this week, but there's this gentleman, uh, I don't even know what his name is, but Portnoy, uh, he, he sold his company, uh, Barstool Sports. Um, and he's got a, he's got a nice chunk of change. And he's, he's broadcasting, right? And so this was the week that he kind of, and maybe he did before, but yeah, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but the CNBC is talking about him because he, he said, you know, um, Warren Buffett is dumb or something and he doesn't know what he's doing. And I made all this money buying airlines while he's selling them. And, 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 and I, I was thinking about that going, damn, this guy's a media product because he's, he's being talked about right now. Whether he's right or wrong isn't, doesn't matter. It's, He's being talked about on CNBC right now. They're legitimizing his his channel, right? His his medium. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. And that's and that's that's always my you know my daily criticism of of CNBC and Bloomberg. It's and I see it importantly. I mean, you know, I, I have opinions of him. He's not the nicest guy in the world, uh, you know, and he's out there making a you know making a mockery of you know Warren Buffett like you said who is in the in the in the financial world you just he's the godfather you don't say anything bad about him so calling him old and some other you know yeah. uh <laughs> choice 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 names um but yeah even like I said I I'm completely ignorant of, of both your you know expertise here with with marketing and, and digital media and that but even I see I, I was like I'm just glad that he doesn't, that he, he's a personality and he's very good and he's very quick witted. He is very funny and quick witted. He's got, and I'm biased. I'm from the Northeast. He's got that like Northeast wit about him. So the things he says are are ridiculous. But if you like, if you dissect it, you're like, what, you know, he made this like insane historical reference from like the, the, you know, the revolutionary war, but it made sense. So it's, you know, you, you know, that there's some, some brain power, back there in the ridiculous things that he's saying but i'm so fortunate that he doesn't have like uh he doesn't really have a a whole a whole thing built out he's just him on video and it's working as because although because i i couldn't beat him if if he was on my stream if he if he had the i mean he would he would take over the world but that doesn't seem to be his goal he's just having fun but that's exactly it he's being talked about he's being legitimized and the problem with with cnbc and and bloomberg and all the other the institutional uh, financial media is they look at him and they just say, oh, this guy, he's a millionaire. He's going to lose all his money and we're going to go right back to buy the dip and hold good companies for 20 years and the same. And but they're, they're completely missing the audience. They're missing the, 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 the appeal about him and, and that kind mm-hmm. of entertainment, you know, no one, no one, they're they're missing the entire next generation of of investors and they're just making fun of them that's all they say all oh, the robin hood millennials and they just joke about it and just move on but i mean their entire audience is retiring soon and they're going to be withdrawing all of their stocks and putting them into fixed assets and who's going to watch them 
these Robin right. Hood millennials, you know? This like, was, right. this was like, who, the who's your customer? Right. The next it, customer, how do you reach them? This was, I remember this conversation in parallel with mom bloggers, right? And, and magazines mm -hmm. and people talking about, oh, it's a bunch of mom bloggers, who cares, right? You know, mm -hmm. until they they blew up, right? And and some of them did exceedingly well and and built media brands of their own and and many are bigger than like what you know what is Vogue now? I mean, I'm sure it's something, but nobody cares, right? Right. Like you right. You, you, you you watch these uh, you, you you watch these the, the the media shift and it it wasn't. It was because there was a demand for something else. And I think that's what Portnoy and Booyah and some other folks represent is financial media is financial media, right? And it is, yeah, stay long, dollar, all, all that stuff. And, and versus, you know, and we watched this guy, uh, Booyah had, a, Booyah had was, was streaming his, uh, his, his show on his show, which is one thing I like about <laughs> that, uh, about the Twitch platform, he was streaming his show on his show while he was literally losing, I think, probably what, a million bucks that day or something? I mean, it was, it was yeah. ugly, you know, and, and you could tell he was struggling and, uh, but he was being real about it. He's like, ah, I'm down, you know, whatever, I'll be up tomorrow, you know? Yeah. You know what you're saying about the mom bloggers? I just, I looked it up really quickly. Heather Armstrong, Deuce, is like the most famous yeah. mom blogger ever from Utah, and she, I think came to fame like what was it eight ten years ago writing yeah. about her washing machine was was it the Maytag or the it was like we bought this washing machine and it crapped out on us and I have seven kids and it's like but then that gets you into affiliate marketing which gets you into influencer marketing today but you're right John sure. I mean these are the the inklings the early version of something that becomes it has a ton of attention on it it's Huge. easily monetized and right. it's not like your grandfather's way of consuming information, like this, this television broadcast, right? That's not fitting into what people do. The 11 hours we average on our screens per day, it's more interactive. Yep. It, it, it feels so similar to me, the, those same conversations, right? And the, the reality is it's, it's not the medium, it's the audience, right? The audience wants something different, you know? Um, it, it, you know, I'm a CNBC watcher, you know, because that's what I've done, but it consumes less and less of my time now, you know? I, I watch it in the morning, kind of, okay, what's going on? All right, I got it. Here's the day. Let's, let's go. And I mm -hmm. actually do better. I, this is not statistically accurate because I've never tracked it, but I do better trading when I do not watch CNBC. Mm-hmm. Because it gets in my it. head. And then I'm, I'm like, it. I'm doing stupid stuff just to chase the market. Um, yeah. Daniel Crosby, who he's been on this podcast, definitely go back and listen to that episode if you missed it. He's the one who's the New York Times bestselling author of The Behavioral Investor at Daniel Crosby. He's a psychologist, behavioral economist. Mm -hmm. um, he -hmm. talks about cable news. And if you're a financial advisor, you should not have cable news on in your office because that's antithetical to everything you're trying to teach people and, and instruct your clients about having a financial plan and staying the course and not being emotional uh, and irrational because what those news shows actually do in the brain is they shut down your own decision-making center of the brain yep. and put you in storytelling um, absorption mode. Like, oh, you're telling me this is true? Okay, I accept just income. So I'm, looking, I'm looking for more, I'm looking for more confirmation from that. Yeah. Yeah. Confirmation sure. bias. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And, and they lie. Uh, and, <laughs> and they lie. A hundred percent. We had, they, they were interviewing, uh, you know, my, myself and my audience are, we're very bearish on this market this year in general. So that it's, that's, that's the way we lean, like shows lean political, that that's where we lean as far as financial. We're, we're, we're bearish on this market. They're obviously bullish because that's their audience and they're just the buy and hold crowd and, and, that's who they're appealing to, but they, they had a guest on and he, pre he presented a, a absolutely false um, figure regarding hotel room bookings. Now, whether he was being disingenuous and give, you know, it, uh, it said something like, Oh, hotel bookings are up back to up to 80% of capacity. You know, that's 80% of the expected 10%, whatever that, that, what he said was they're back to 80%. 
and I have people on my screen right over here. I have people in chat, in my chat, in, in the hospitality industry. I have, there's someone that owns like a whole, a whole, like five hotels, people in the hospitality industry, in catering, in uh, business uh, travel planning. You know, there, there are 10, 15 people jump in the chat and just start screaming like that is absolutely not true. Well, you know, yeah. we're only, we only have this many people booked. We've canceled all flights for, for the rest of the year. We canceled all events. I have all my weddings are getting pushed back. I have no food. There's, it's like they, they, you know, they, they have an agenda uh, and it's, it's so, it's so dishonest and it's so obvious that it just doesn't appeal at all to, to the people that, watch you know me or, or watch portnoy as ridiculous as he is he's he's genuine and we've had that conversation yeah. as well it's like he's acting i'm like i'm telling you he's not acting no one if if he's acting he needs an academy award because no one could maintain that that emotion <laughs> and and th that's just who he is you know he's yeah. brash he's uh he's but he's honest and he's losing a lot of money and he's angry about it and and it's you know, it, it's entertaining, but it's because more because it's it's real. Yeah. Entertaining because it's real. Well, with that, uh, we're going to wrap up here. But Booyah, let people know where they can find and follow you. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Wall Street Booyah. And uh, I'm on Twitter at WS Booyah. My joke there is I'm too big for Twitter, so I had to shorten it. Um, I think if you just Google Wall Street Booyah <laughs> one word, I'm probably the only thing that comes up. But You are, yes. And uh, yes, John Andrews. Well. <laughs> uh, I'm at Katahdin, uh, K-T-A-D-H-I-N, on most social channels, or you can find me at Photify. What does Katahdin mean, John? Katahdin is a big mountain in Maine that's the terminus point of the Appalachian Trail. And uh, I lived there for a while and kind of fell in love with it when email was coming out. Yes, I'm that old. So that's e dash mail. E dash mail. And yeah. uh, that was my first uh, like Yahoo or tripod or I don't know, one of those. And uh, just kind of kept it. Cool. Well, it stands out and you don't have any numbers on it. So that's a win. Well, this has been great. Thank you guys so much. This episode is episode 71 of the Beetle Moment Marketing Podcast. You can go to beetlemoment.com slash podcast to see the show notes, links to everything we talked about and subscribe free. So thanks guys. Thank you so thanks much, so much, Emily. <laughs>